Well, hi there and welcome back. This is the screencast on energy. This is a continuing screencast for topic two in the uh, IB physics curriculum. This is in mechanics. Okay, so in this uh, screencast we're going to talk about transformations of energy, the mechanical variety of energy, that is gravitational potential and kinetic, and conservation of energy. So let's get started. So the forms of energy, the energy comes in different forms. How many can you identify? Well, there's mechanical, as we mentioned. You can have electrical energy, nuclear, heat, chemical energy, wave energy could be in the form of like electromagnetic energy, sound, sound waves, and water waves, right? We can get energy from the tides and going in and out. So how many uh, examples of each can you name? Can you name a process or a device? For example, um, you know, nuclear to electrical would be a nuclear power plant. Um, electrical to thermal would be a toaster. Chemical to electrical would be like a battery. So we have various forms of energy all around us in everyday life. So we have energy transformations. Let's take a light bulb as an example. So this lamp right, converts electrical energy into light. But not much of the energy goes into producing light in these old style incandescent bulbs. Right? Most of that electrical energy is converted to heat. If you've ever tried to touch one of these after it's been on for a while, you'd probably know that. So this is not a very efficient energy conversion process or transformation. In terms of mechanical energy, well, we have kinetic energy and potential energy. In the case of mechanical, we really are talking about gravitational. Sometimes you might just see potential energy. In this case, we're talking about gravitational potential energy. So we have this picture here of a ball going up and down. The ball energy is being transformed between kinetic and gravitational potential here. So up top we have maximum potential, minimum kinetic. And down the bottom we have just the opposite. So let's look closer at mechanical energy in terms of kinetic energy. This is energy of motion. right? When things move, they have kinetic energy. The equation that gives us kinetic energy is 1 half times the mass of the object times the velocity squared. Now this is a scalar quantity, so we could use speed here instead of velocity. It's the mass, velocity, and that deserves a box. In terms of gravitational potential energy, potential refers to stored energy. And gravitational means it's, well, it's due to its position. It has some height. So we define this by the object's mass times the gravitational uh, constant, the acceleration of gravity, and times the object's height above some, some level. That deserves a box, too. The total energy, mechanical energy, abbreviated TME, is the sum of kinetic and gravitational potential energies. Let's talk about the units of energy. For mechanical energy, well, we could have some long convoluted units, but we're going to shortcut it and give it the energy of Joule, named after this fellow, James Prescott Joule. He used to um, heat up water, water with an egg beater, I think he did. Let's take an example. How much kinetic energy does a 2,000 kilogram car have when it moves at 5 meters per second? Well, we know the equation, 1 half mv squared. Let's plug in the numbers, mv, and then we have to square it. Order of our operate, operations means square happens first, multiply through, we get 25 kilojoules or 25,000 joules. So remember our Newton's cradle. We talked about this in conservation of momentum and how momentum is nicely conserved. You have one ball coming in and one ball coming out with the same velocity. Well, if two balls exited, but with half the speed, what would happen there? Well, we would have two balls, two mass, times the speed of one half. That would be two times one half would be one. Well, that gives us momentum of one after. We had a momentum of one before. Momentum would be conserved. But that's not what we see. So something else must be going on. So let's consider energy in this case. So let's say we have kinetic energy given by our standard equation there. So before a ball hits, we have a mass of one ball and a velocity of one, let's say, coming in. If we work this out, we get a quantity of one half, and we'll leave the unit of joule off for now. Let's talk about if we had two balls leaving with half the velocity. Let's find out what the energy would be. 
Well, we have half times the mass of now two, and they're le both leaving with a velocity of one half. So momentum's conserved, but check out the energy here. We get one fourth here. So half over energy, energy is is gone. Energy is not conserved here. Okay. So conservation of energy. Let's recall our discussion. What does it mean for something to be dis conserved? Well, it's accounted for. We we were talking about when we talked about momentum. Let's remember our skydiver here. Back from we talked about terminal velocity. So let's say a skydiver jumps from an uh, altitude of three kilometers. What velocity would he or she have if there were no air resistance pushing back? In other words, the diver just accelerated all the way down to the ground. Okay, start off with a velocity of zero. We're going to use conservation of energy to help solve this. Here we have gravitational potential energy up at the top and no kinetic energy. It's not moving. He or she's not moving. And at the bottom, all the energy is going to be kinetic. In other words, their height is gone, so all their energy is in kinetic form. We can use the equations to find this. Right, here's gravitational potential, here's kinetic, and we want to solve this for V. Notice the M's cancel. Solving this for V, we get about 240 meters per second. If you convert that, it works out to about over something over 500 miles per hour. So the skydiver is in trouble. Let's look at this little animation here. We have a cart going down, and this is a this track here. This roller coaster. Over on the right, we have some bar graphs that represent kinetic potential. This would be gravitational potential and total mechanical energy. Total would be the sum of kinetic and potential at every instant. So if we start off with a cart up here, we have all potential, but as we lose potential, we gain kinetic. And as we come up the first loop, we gain some potential back and then back down. We lose it, it's converted back to kinetic. And then again, at the bottom, we're all kinetic, no potential. Get a little bit of height back. And finally, at the bottom here, we're all kinetic. And the total mechanical energy at every place along here remains constant. Now, this is an ideal roller coaster. There is, in real life, there's friction. But this serves to illustrate the point of conservation of mechanical energy. So again, this is assuming there's no friction on the track. So let's talk about collisions. Remember those from conservation of momentum? So let's talk about some different types of collisions. We need to differentiate the types when we're talking about energy and collisions. So we have elastic. Some objects that do this are those that are very rigid and do not deform when they, when they collide. Some examples of those billiard balls. Right? Here's a, a video clip. If you click on that, you can watch it. Magnets on the carts. You notice when we collide our carts together in class, they have magnets on the end, so they don't actually touch. That helps create more of an elastic collision. Elastic is not really practical in everyday life, but we have to consider it because when we study thermal physics uh, and we have subatomic particles bouncing around, there's an assumption that those do so, uh, those collide elastically. So for elastic collisions with particles, the kinetic energy before and after is, is the same. Let's take inelastic. That's the other type. These are some things you, when you see some things collide in everyday life, they're usually inelastic. So objects deform like uh, or create sound when they collide. Clay, if you take some clay and you know smack it against the wall, uh, or cars when they collide, they deform. Uh, sports. So for example, if you uh, if you hit a ball, the ball will deform some. There's a, a link there. You can watch a YouTube video of a, of a golf ball being struck. You would think a golf ball is being very rigid, but they definitely do deform when they hit. In these cases, in inelastic collisions, kinetic energy is not conserved. Now, for both of these, momentum is conserved always. Okay, if in every kind, any kind of collision, momentum is conserved. However, in only elastic collisions, uh, kinetic energy is conserved. So there's a couple of cars. Okay, that's it for your screencast on energy. Bye.